So it's been five days I've been working on my cottage expansion and we've gone from this to now this. We still have a lot of work ahead of us and first we've got to finish off the floor joists. We have a few more to actually add. Kalina wasn't the most confident up here. So we get straight into it, just adding on a few more joists at the end there so we can finally have our boards going all the way. And with that we have at least somewhat of a stable floor which we can walk on all along. And now we have to do the scary part of removing all of those sheets, at least all the middle ones you will see. It's going to involve us having to remove still the remaining screws as we have changed our plan to now encompass the entire roof. And the main reason we have to remove these now is because we want to get these boards up and under the sheets and with the sheets just there, it's just going to be painful. But first, let's clear away some of these branches as they're a little bit in the way. We just grab our saw here. We can lean over our feet planted stably on the floor and just go and saw that off and then it'll break a bit. But we can just go and pull that out and chuck it down here for now. The sheep and goats will love those juicy leaves. Now we just have to do a few more. So there we go, looking much more cleared up. We did a bit more here on the left as well. So the next steps is to grab this wood here and put it on top of this wood and then pick up all of that wood and move it as it's a bit in the way of driving up there. So me not thinking ahead went and picked up this big pile, carefully lifted it up there. We don't want to damage any of this and then went to lower it down just here. However, we need to make sure that these studs underneath it are actually going to hold it and be in the correct positions to carry its weight so it doesn't like sag on the ground. So we lowered that down and then grabbed the little pile and lowered that on top of the whole bundle, which very nicely the machine has no problem lifting the entire thing. So we've got to go and move that now as they'll be needing that dung behind there to spread on the field sooner than late. So we move it all over here and we park the teleporter or a loader and then cover up the wood. And that was all of the two hours I could spare that day to work on this. We did get to this point, so I wasn't too unhappy, but we have still have to insulate the entire floor. So we move to the morning of the following day. So the plan now is to remove the sheets off the roof, but I can't find the damn screwdriver. But thinking back, I finally remember it was put within the teleporter behind me. So we got the screwdriver and we've got to put the correct hex bit in. And that's to take out all of those hex screws that are used to hold the roof down. Oh, well, it's time to finally do it. We got to climb this ladder and take out the screws up top there, all the way along, all the way to the top. A little bit scary. So let's get started pulling out all the screws and finally dragging down the sheet. We move to the next one and so on and so forth until we have every sheet removed. We don't need to remove the two outside ones as they should be okay to bend them up, but we will have to cut the corners. Now let's just refix some of that breather membrane. It's been sliding down. We go, we grab our staple gun just here. We do have like three of them. I don't think this is the best one, but we're going to give it a shot. You can see the roof just there and how the membrane was coming down. It should be covering the insulation there just to give it a little bit of extra protection in case of any water creeping in. So we just grab that and we got to stick it under there and then just staple it down onto the wood. These staples don't seem to be too great. They do go in, but we do go and use a hammer to tap them nicely in. And there we go, the roof looking much more prettier. But we will be removing a lot of that once we actually have the roof of the extension put up. The next step is to, much like this one here where we sawed it off, remove those two as well. Just grabbing the saw, we go and we get to work. Once we're all the way through, well that thing just falls off. We can fetch it later. And we do that to the next one as well. So now we can go and we can finally drag our sheets all the way up so that they're butted with it like so. We need to do that with the rest of them as well. Now one of the biggest steps that's going to take a lot of time is filling these joists with insulation all the way where it's going to be under the actual floor. So we do have our insulation here, seven rolls. I'm hoping it's enough. I did my math and it should be. 
but you never know it could be just more shrunk than they say oh well let's get this plastic ripped open so we can pull out one of these rolls Kaline's very interested in what i'm doing but we get it ripped open enough that we can drag out one of the rolls and chuck it up there and we can move the teleporter with those sheets while we're at it now to hold up the insulation between the joists we're going to use this membrane here we're going to recycle it but we need to just snip it off this as i don't fancy removing the galvanized sheeting that's there i'm standing on it there's no need so we'll just go and we'll cut that along and then go and pull that up out of there now you can see this will be going over those joists well in between them and then nestled in just like so we stapled that one as an example of what it's going to be like but we want to use these they're like battens which will much more securely hold that membrane in place so we drag out a whole bunch and bring them to our work site we then use our measuring tape to get the length there and get a rough estimate of how long our batten needs to be measure the batten to its correct length about 190 will do grabbing the saw we can make a little mark there and then remove the measuring tape of course secure it with our foot and we can get this sawed off no problem once we have two of those we'll be putting those inside up along there to secure it we grab our hammer and some nails and we can get that sorted out tapping in a nail at one end straightening it up and getting our next nail and securing it on the other end as well and with a third nail in the middle that should be more than enough to secure the membrane so it ain't going anywhere so there we have it secured on both sides tight enough to hold up at least our insulation which is this thing which is going in there but first well we got to do there there and here we get the second one done the third and the fourth and now we can grab our insulation to roll out into them we get our scissors and we can just go and release the insulation so we can actually access it from within this plastic and then stupid me kind of went and cut it already without actually measuring the size we got some good old gloves there as this thing is pretty terrible to touch especially to breathe in as they're all kind of glass fine particles and we can roll that insulation out and now we see our problem yeah it's not exactly gonna fit properly and that is because we took a third of the roll instead of the full half as we should have but we sort that out we get like another part cut off and rolled out and snugly fits in there you can see the two rows there. I won't be making that mistake again. So that's that lovely and set with those two joists. And now we can finally put the boards back and on top. And well, we get our drill and we can finally screw those boards down. Now we got to do the next section. Again, getting our membrane, thawing those battens to their correct length. At this point, I'm refining my method of pre-tapping in the nails just to make it a lot easier when putting those battens in place. And again, lining it up, juggling with the membrane, tapping it in on one side, then moving to the other. I can move the batten still a little bit since it's only tapped in on one side and we can pull the membrane back up and tap in that nail on that side and then also in the middle nice and easy and well we do that again same on the opposite side until we have finally two of those joists fully done and we can roll out the insulation and with our second part where we went to the next roll we can see it nicely it's the right size it makes it a lot easier than having to deal with two strips of it bloody hell the first time was annoying and again we cover it with boards screwing those down removing the boards of the next section and then i got a little bit distracted i want to do something different and i got these decking boards and placed in there just to see what it would be like and how big this place would be and that's going to be like the deck and this is the entire width of the one side now we had to do a little bit of extra work we had to put an additional nog in there you can see we have one further back and now we have to put another one here and the reason is we want the insulation all the way under the floor and if the wall is going at the end there we need the insulation up to the wall so we have to place additional noggins for the rest of the way where we put the noggins in the incorrect place yes not exact planning i should have known this from the beginning 
and we gotta measure that distance and measure a new noggin overall it's just extra support but definitely something you want to keep in mind if you're doing a project like this for yourself try and think ahead as much as possible we get the noggin nicely measured out and then just cut to size then we gotta place it in there with some nails and with those two extra noggins in we can again put our membrane over secure it down in each location just there and then fill it with the insulation covering it with the boards and screwing them down and that was my day's work done we got three rows of the boards and six rows of the joists finished on all insulated so that's three fifths of the way done at this point i'm completely wrecked and gotta go and rest for the next day so day eight begins with tim begging for some milk oh he's so cute when he begs we do indeed give him some milk. Sorry, the lighting is abysmal here. And he nestles down to sleep. And so while we were working putting new plastic on a punny tunnel, you can greet Kaline here in the morning, we did get the wood delivered to us. And this is the much longer length for the roof. Along with that, we also got this new membrane that we will need for the walls of roof. And we also need some between the joists for the insulation as we don't exactly have enough of the older stuff. So here's our nice flat floor, but underneath these boards, we don't have any insulation yet. So we have at this point much more refined our method for mass producing these support buttons by pre-tapping in their nails after cutting them to the right size. We get the last few nails in and you can see all that we've achieved. That's a whole load of battles with support nails. And that's just for between two sections. So with that, we're nearly done. We move some support over, roll out the membrane and it's going just in there. We have to turn it upside down and then tap it in there and secure it with then the insulation going in between, putting the two boards on top, moving to the next areas again with the membrane. And then I'm like, ah, we actually got some spare older membrane. So we go use that instead, tapping it and securing it in there again, insulating it, putting the boards on top. And that's it. We now have a fully functioning insulated floor, nice, stable and solid with everything screwed down. The next steps from here is to build up the walls so we can get the roof up ASAP before it freaking rains and ruins all my work. You can see what it looks like there. This thing is pretty massive, a bit bigger than I originally thought it would be. My plans had it scaled down a little bit smaller, but since the wood that I received was actually bigger than I thought I would get, I thought I may as well go with it and make it that little bit bigger. And so again, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.